Mark Gaylor for markgaylor.com. I just thought I'd like to take the opportunity to show you my workflow when opening images from Lightroom into Photoshop. Now um, there are certain things that we still can't do inside of Lightroom to an image and this would include uh, compositing or using some of the uh, sophisticated blur tools inside of Photoshop such as Gaussian blur, surface blur and lens blur. Okay I've got an image here and I'm going to open this one into Photoshop. Now uh, there is a keyboard shortcut which is Command E on a Mac, Control E on a PC. This will open this um, raw file as a background layer inside of Photoshop. I'm not going to take that option. I'm going to right click on the image, uh, scroll down to Edit In, and I'm going to choose Open as Smart Object in Photoshop. Now this particular option uh, won't rasterize or basically bake in the changes that I've been doing inside of Lightroom. It's going to open up the raw file inside a layer, a smart object layer, inside of Photoshop CC. Um, this is taking a little bit longer just because it has to uh, duplicate that raw file um, and then it's placed it inside of this layer. Now this layer here is not your typical background layer. I'll just zoom in so you can see that. Uh, we have a little icon on this layer and that is the smart object icon there. And instead of uh, being called background, it's actually carrying the number of the file that was in my Lightroom catalog. Okay, I'll just zoom back out. Now, because this is a completely non-destructive workflow, uh, if I do want to make any color changes, instead of using adjustment layers, I can simply back up into Adobe Camera Raw. Let's just do that. I'll just double click on this thumbnail and you can see um, all of the settings uh, that I uh, basically perform to this raw file inside of Lightroom are here inside of Lightroom. Okay, let's just cancel this out and show you that if we did actually have a background layer, um, we wouldn't be able to use those raw editing controls. We'd basically have to use adjustment layers to adjust color or tone. I'll just come in with a curves adjustment layer and um, we can basically then just come to the individual channels. I'm going to make this a cold morning instead of a warm morning and so I'll just take out a little bit of red as as well okay and there we get the nice cold morning now although this is a viable option for retouching um, it is uh, a little bit old school I think in that uh, we we could basically um, commit these changes uh, directly to the raw settings instead of double processing the file if we need to double process the file it is important that we are in pro photo and 16 bits per channel which are the de default external editing settings um, that are, are in the preferences inside of Lightroom okay I'll just throw that curves layer away and I'll basically show you my workflow for cooling this down and that is simply just to open that file into Adobe Camera Raw and if I wanted to create an alternate uh, white balance setting I could just simply uh, move that temperature slider um, and make that cooler. Now I think this is actually the best place to commit these changes because we're working directly to the raw data. We're not double processing this file and we're working at the native bit depth of the sensor. So it doesn't really matter whether the file was opened as 16 bits per channel or 8 bits per channel because we're working at that native bit depth. Okay, so let's just uh, cancel this out. Okay, I'm going to do uh, something slightly different because I'm more than happy with the color. In fact, there's probably I'll just go back and I'll just show you one other way that actually Lightroom and Photoshop are communicating with each other. Okay, so these are the um, the developed settings from Lightroom, but we're in obviously the Adobe Camera Raw interface. Uh, but it, one of the panels that um, uh, Lightroom also shares between the two pieces of software is if we come over over to the snapshots panel you can see these were snapshots that I created inside of Lightroom so I'll just uh, this is the warm dawn okay cool grad okay and cold morning okay so and if I want to uh, process that I simply hit OK and that will update 
um, the file inside of Photoshop. No adjustment layers. Okay, and this is my preferred way of editing files inside of Photoshop. I'll just undo and go back to the previous uh, raw settings there. And uh, what I'd like to do now is create a little composite. So I'm just going to come up to my libraries um, folder. It'll take a little while to uh, load those libraries. You can see I've got some textures here, but I've also got some flare files here. Okay, and I'm looking for this particular flare file. Now, these uh, is a way of actually um, uh, accessing Adobe stock images or actually images that you've just saved to your own libraries as a CC member. This is actually a stock uh, image that I purchased from Adobe stock. And I'm just going to drag that into the image area. And I'll just resize that to fit my working space, like so. And then I'm going to... Um, commit these changes. Just before I commit the changes however this is basically a dynamic um, uh, adjustment that we're making at the moment so I can actually adjust the opacity to see where this flare or sunburst is actually occurring and at the moment it's occurring in the water instead of the sky so I'll just uh, flip vertical to put that higher in the image uh, before committing Okay, and also raising the opacity of that file. And now I'm just going to pop the blend mode into screen. Okay, and there basically is my finished file. Okay, now what I'll do is, uh, uh, now that I've finished, I want to basically add this uh, to my Lightroom catalog. So I'll simply hit uh, Command S on a Mac, Control S on a PC, and that basically saves um, that file. Now you'll notice that I didn't choose a location where I'm saving. It's going to save it back into the folder uh, with the original raw file. So that when I return to Lightroom, you'll see that file has been placed alongside the original raw file. And so that is the edited version. Okay, now at some stage I might be tempted to carry on working on this file inside of Lightroom, but I am going to resist that temptation. Um, if I need to do any more work to this file, I am going to use that keyboard shortcut for open this time, not right click, open a smart object. I'm going to go Command E on a Mac, Control E on a PC, and I'm going to choose Edit Original. Okay, if we had done any uh, adjustments inside of Lightroom, I would have to open a copy uh, with those Lightroom adjustments in order to see what I'd added to that multi layered file. But because I'm not going to make any adjustments after the file has come back into my Lightroom catalog, I'm going to choose Edit Original. This will give me access uh, to my layers. I'll just collapse that libraries panel so you can see my two layers. If I need to um, uh, move the sun, okay, I can just transform and uh, basically move that sun higher in the sky before committing that transformation. If I wanted to adjust any of the settings associated to the raw file, I could do that by just double clicking uh, the thumbnail and uh, exercising those adjustments directly in inside of Adobe Camera Raw. If I've made some changes, again, just save those changes off, close the file, and uh, return to Lightroom to see those changes. Okay, so that basically is my workflow. Uh, I like uh, to think that these, um, uh, these three pieces of software, Lightroom, and um, uh, Photoshop CC and Adobe Camera Raw are the three amigos. They've really been designed to communicate to each other and work as a team. Okay, thank you for listening. If you found the information useful, thumbs up, uh, like the video, and I'm Mark Gaylor for markgaylor.com.